Hello, and in this video, as you can see, I've come outside. Spring has sprung, lockdown's easing, and I thought it was about time I showed you a few techniques that you can use outside in the daylight. Now down here, I have uh, some old railway lines, uh, and I thought it would make a reasonably nice picture to do something uh, fairly wide angle uh, at this end. So, I'm going to put the camera on this uh, tripod here and the camera has a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on it uh, in order to uh, give me a bit of distortion at this end. Uh, so just as a, a starting point uh, I will just take a, a normal exposure just using the daylight uh, just to see uh, where we are. Uh, so I'll just set the, uh, the camera up here, we'll put that on f8 uh, something like a hundredth of a second, perhaps. Let me just have a look through the viewfinder. That's not bad. And there you go. Uh, so you can see that that's a reasonably normal um, type image. Uh, it's quite nice, but it's nothing to write home about. So in order to uh, jazz it up a bit uh, and uh, make it maybe a little bit better, what I'm going to do is um, use a, a technique called high-speed sync uh, with a flash so that I can use the flash outside uh, to um, enhance, overpower, uh, etc. Uh, the normal daylight. So in order to do that, uh, what I'm going to do first is just show you the sort of result that you can get by using a higher shutter speed on the camera. So at the moment I'm on a hundredth of a second. If I just wind this up to, um, what shall we start at, four hundredth of a second. You can see there that it's got a little bit darker. And now I'll do a thousandth of a second. And we've got darker still. Just check the back of the camera. Yeah. And now two thousandth of a second. There you go. And most of your image is starting to disappear at this point. Okay. So with the camera set like that, what I can do now is um, introduce a flash. But obviously, if you use a flash at uh, two thousandth of a second, uh, normally you wouldn't get uh, any result from it. Uh, but if you use high-speed sync. Um, then you can use any shutter speed you like. So, uh, in order to do that, I will find a camera trigger, such as this one. Turn that on, pop that on the camera. This is a Profoto Air Sync uh, and it's um, set to um, high speed. Uh, so I'm going to use that in conjunction with uh, a Profoto B1X head. Uh, this is a uh, battery powered, it has a lithium battery on the side of it here, uh, which makes it very portable. I'm using it on full power uh, and uh, this will sync uh, to the camera through the uh, flash trigger. Okay, so with the camera set as it was, uh, I'll just hold this in, in an appropriate position uh, and we'll just do a bit of a test. I've got this set to full power at the moment. We'll just have a look on the back of the camera and see what that looks like. It's not bad. And basically what you're going to do is just use it to paint in uh, the light that you want. go and we'll just carry on with separate exposures like this like so uh, I might do one from a bit further away as well like that and we'll just do another one from around this side. Sort of mimicking where the sun's coming from, so it wants to be about there somewhere. There 
There we go. Okay. So as far as the actual capturing of the images is concerned, that's about it. Uh, the next stage would be to um, take all these images, uh, put them into Photoshop, and I'll show you how I glue them all together. Okay, so here we are um, in front of Photoshop, and I have opened up the, uh, the plain image, the, the first one that we took, just with daylight, uh, just to have a look round, uh, and just as a comparison, really, between this and the ones that we will use the light painting on. Uh, now, I took quite a few, so in order to speed up um, just importing them, what I will do is just go to File, go down here to uh, Scripts, and I'll use the Load Files into Stack. I'll browse for all the files. Uh, this is where the light painting started. There. And I'll just load all those into a stack like this. It takes a little while, we'll just speed that up in the video. And there you go. So now they're all loaded into a stack. Uh, I can just review these just by going down and turning off each layer. There we go. Now, how these are combined together uh, is the, uh, the thing that will make your picture. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm not saying you should do this every time, but it gives you an idea. If you select the top one, and then select one up from the bottom one, hold down the Shift key on the keyboard, and just click the uh, left-hand side of the mouse, that will select all the layers. You can then change the blending mode from normal uh, to lighter color. And what that will do is basically um, add each layer together uh, as if you had done a multiple exposure in the camera. Uh, what that does is show you basically what has moved. If you look at all the grasses on here, you can see that they have all moved slightly because they were probably blowing in the wind whereas the steel um, railway lines obviously haven't moved at all. Uh, but it shows you um, just what would happen if you merged all of your uh, light painting images together in one go. Uh, and it's a good start, it's a guide, basically. Uh, so having seen that, uh, I can now just put that back to uh, normal again. Uh, and we'll have a proper look through them. I quite like this image. Um, it has quite a lot of contrast going for it. Um, it could probably do to have some of the elements of the other images added to it. So we'll just have a little look and see which ones we want to add to it. I quite like that one as well, which is this one here. So we might add a bit of that one to it. Uh, this has maybe made the grass here a little light. Same on the other side. That one's a better one, I think. That's quite a nice image to add. Uh, in fact, if we just have a, a bit of a play with those two, just on their own. Um, so if I just click on that one and change the blending mode again, there we go. Yes, I think that's uh, quite nice. I'll leave that on for the time being uh, and just go through and have a look at some of the others. Actually, that one's better, isn't it? I think. I quite like the way that that has uh, come out. OK, so I'm actually only going to use these two layers. Uh, and what I will produce now is um, a thing that uh, it called a stamp layer, which basically will just give me uh, a merge of these two layers as another layer. Uh, and the way you do that is if you just click off all the layers, so none of them are highlighted, hold down the Shift key, the Control key, the Alt key, and press the E key, that will make you a new layer 
which is this one at the top here. So I can turn all the others off because we don't actually need them anymore. But they're all there if you wanted to go back and do some editing on them. Um, but this is now the uh, culmination of whatever it was that you had before. Okay, so that's looking all right. Um, there are a few things um, which I can see just in the background here at the top. Uh, and it looks like there's a piece of debris in here which can easily be got rid of. Uh, so we'll just use the clone stamp. Uh, and a little trick for doing this, once you've set the size, if we um, probably make that a little smaller, it's very soft, which is fine. If you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and just place it on the edge of the line here, which will give a reference point, then if I move it to where I want to clone out the, the part, I can line that up again. You see what I'm doing? If I just move this ever so slightly. And then holding down the key on the keyboard, just paint that bit in. And there it was gone. So that's good. Um, it might be worth just having a look at a crop, actually, just to see how much of the top we can lose. Uh, so, um, yes, so pulling it down to here, that can't be far away from uh, my usual 16 by 9. Uh, if I just select 16 by 9, here we are. Yeah, it isn't too far away, is it? It's about there. Yes, I think that, that would do as a crop, so I will crop it like that. There we go. Um, and I might just vignette the sides ever so slightly, uh, but I might also just add a little noise to the whole image, uh, just to uh, give it a bit of grunge. Uh, well, actually, I think the first thing I will do is if I just go to image adjustments and go to, um, what shall we do, brightness contrast, if I start winding up the contrast a bit, make it a bit more grungy, maybe add a little bit more brightness, not too much. Don't want to burn any of the highlights out. But that's made it a bit more grungy. That's good. Click on OK. So the next thing I would do is just add a bit of a vignette uh, around the sides. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do this, but I like to do it uh, in this way. To do that, I will just add another layer, just above that one. Um, and we'll go for a selection. And I'm just going to add uh, an ellipse. If you hold down the Alt key again, that will draw the ellipse from the center. Uh, so something like that move that around. It will give you guides, uh, but you don't necessarily always want it right in the middle. I think this time I will do. Um, and I would just like to modify the edges of that, so I would like to feather it. Um, we'll start with 200, see what that looks like. So having feathered it, uh, what I will do next uh, is just invert it, like so, and then using the, uh, the paint bucket, I'll just fill in the edges like so. Uh, yeah, that is a bit extreme, that, uh, that mask, so what I will do is if I just select deselect, like so, I can then alter the opacity of that, just to make it a bit less uh, stream like so, like that. There we go. And yeah, I don't think that's too bad at all. Um, that was the original, if you like, that was just using daylight. Uh, and with a little bit of manipulation and a little bit of uh, clever light painting, we've ended up with that. Okay. So I hope uh, you enjoyed that video. 
Uh, and if you like to see these sort of things, just click on the other images as they appear. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.